In the previous video, we showed how cities and urbanization contribute to global environmental challenges. Yet, as we saw, there are a number of interlinked challenges that require an urgent solution. In this course of Urban Metabolism for Policymakers, we propose to use urban metabolism as a concept that enables to offer systemic environmental policies for cities. What is urban metabolism, you might ask? Well, urban metabolism is a metaphor comparing this to this. Urban metabolism is an analogy that compares cities to a living organism. As an organism, a city, a city requires resources to function. They transport them or stock them within their territory and then discard them uh, as different types of wastes. Yet an unique definition does not exist, as different disciplines and different schools of thought have used this expression to point out different findings. At the end of the 19th century, Karl Marx used this expression to describe humans, um, how humans extracted materials and altered the biophysical processes and landscapes. In a way, he used this metaphor to explain how humans were colonizing nature. Another sociologist that used this term is Ernest Burgess from the Chicago School of Sociology. In 1925, Burgess uh, proposed a theoretical model explaining the spatial distribution of social groups. The metabolism of a city then indicated the mobility of social groups. Yet perhaps the most influential article on urban metabolism was published in 1965 by Abel Woolman, a sanitation engineer. He defined urban metabolism as all materials and commodities needed to sustain the city's inhabitants at home, at work, and at play. His article studied the metabolism of a theoretical city in the US of 1 million inhabitants. His study is still considered to be one of the seminal studies of the field and of urban environmental accounting. The previous study of Abel Woolman inspired other scholars in the 70s to do more studies. A couple of studies springed in the 70s, including Brussels and Hong Kong. In the 80s and the 90s, there was a period during which very few studies on urban metabolism were conducted. For this period, urban metabolism was heavily criticized as it oversimplified the complex phenomena present in a city. From the 2000 and onwards, uh, however, there was an explosion in UM studies, in urban metabolism studies. Over a hundred studies were conducted um, studying the metabolism of cities around the world. You can click the link, you can follow the link over here to look at these different studies and which are the associated publications. Today, urban metabolism studies are addressing a number of challenges. Some studies wish to learn how we can transpose the, function of, the functioning of natural ecosystem to the design of cities. Other studies, such as the one of Woolman, account flows in order to transpose policies to reduce them. Other, uh, other studies, again, use the concept of urban metabolism to question the relationship that humans have over nature and how the distribution of flows underline social inequalities. In this course, we will mainly focus on the accounting aspect of urban metabolism. This approach measures the flows that circulate through the city. In a way, this accounting approach is an important data collection that measure inflows such as energy, water, and material flows. Outflows such as pollution emission, wastewater, and cell solid wastes, but also uh, materials that are stocked in the city for a long period of time, such as buildings, infrastructure, or vehicles. As you see here, an urban metabolism study is often compared as a data collection or a large data collection process. A typical urban metabolism uh, study starts by analyzing the context of a city and define its spatial boundaries. These spatial boundaries really define the system boundaries uh, for which we will study flows. 
Data about the flows entering and exiting the city are then compiled. These can include water, energy, food, uh, waste, etc. etc. Finally, data on the infrastructure, uh, utilities and policies are gathered to better understand the factors which may influence or control metabolic flows. On the next module, we will explain what are the approaches and methodologies used to measure metabolism studies and what type of results we can achieve through each of them.